out into this. This is not a native though. These people. Well, it's not a native of this country though, is it? Kaki Kiwi. No. Is it? Well, I want to answer this question very carefully in front of all these people as a witness. Are you planning to leave this country? To leave it? Yes. I will one day. Yeah, but no, you won't. They'll put you in the ground, right? That doesn't mean you're leaving. Are you planning to sort of migrate somewhere? No, not really. Well, then you're not a native either, see? So we've got to reevaluate some of these things. We're going to keep that, just we'll let that one go through to the future now. Because, oh, <laughs> and all of those things that's running around here, I don't think any of them are native. And I think three quarters of these plants that you're feeding them on, none of them are native either. So it's not a good argument. All I'm saying is that's not a good way of making a scientific decision. Yeah. But that we will do best with the native things if we grow everything. The natives will still take over, they'll still be in charge. So I can still kill, kill kaki weed. If you want to waste your money, yes. You don't want to waste it. My son is going to teach me. I knew nothing about farming, right? Yeah. And so we set him up in his house and he got <coughs> married and everything else. He, got, he fixed up the <laughs> fixed up the rotary hoe and he got the tractor and he got the slasher and he ripped the shit out of this ground and you couldn't walk near it for that either for five years. So I went there and I put a mulch garden around, planted a bit of garlic. We never touched it, sprayed it or anything else. You'd walk around and run around with your boots on. Not a problem today, and it's only taken two years. Yeah. Mm. Where'd you put garlic? I put garlic in, yeah, but only because I was putting moss around the high ground so that it had moved across past the house area. Mm. And every bit in this, and only outside, if you go outside where the treatment has been, and it's only, you put a garden in in the mulch, mm. you don't do anything else. Yeah. You water that piece, every time it rains, it spreads the facility through. Um. So you're talking about vegetation as a whole, not just dip a certain species like what the family is there. You're talking sort of just grass growth. Yeah. So, yeah. That's my, my. But you leave your grass, even a lot of this stuff, when it's finished setting its seed in that. Yeah. Put it this way, if you think you're going to have an extended season or somebody that's had as much rain as you and you mulch it down, mm. it'll, before it's actually flowered, It'll definitely grow again because oh, you've got yeah. enough moisture in your ground. But if you don't, it'll just run up the seed, go green, crop the seed, finish. So you can double your growing time mm. by going out. And you don't do it all. You just go into your main paddocks and do maybe a third of the paddock or you do it yep. in patches yep. on the contour. Yeah. And you'll find that in the end, even if you did all this, I'll guarantee if you came up and slashed this, before, if you, if you graze it in sort of four or five weeks' time again, that will all disappear, the cattle will be there. Mm. What about um, seeding introduced um, the stylos and things into this country? Peter, that's sort of an advantage, do you think? If you've done the right research, I think any plant that grows well is an advantage. Right. And, you know, the principle of getting the animals to shift it has wor worked well because it used mm. to go for hundreds of millions of years before we got involved and suddenly you knew a bit more about the system and bugged it up and it always. Mm. 